everybody and welcome to the letter this game is only a demo I will leave a link to its Kickstarter in the description this game honestly looks really really cool I found it and I thought it looked really neat apparently it's supposed to be that old-fashioned kind of horror kind of like the like Japanese like horror uh, kind of like the grudge or uh, uh, the ring and stuff like that it's supposed to have that really creepy aspect to it and I'm really excited and I honestly can't wait till they release the full version of this game but let's jump right in I'm excited let's go oh shit and it's begun we we began with a lady firmly pressing her entire being against uh, the window and making me shot my trousers but uh, let's start this game the Ermagerd mansion the Ermagerd the Ermengard the Ermagerd the Ermagerd mansion it was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermigerd. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Humble ambassadors of peace, beloved by their people. Wonderful. The seasons of joy eventually ended, and the good nobles perished at the hands of the Great Plague. Damn you, bubonic plague! Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermiger. I don't even know how that's pronounced. She was orphaned at the age of four. That's... that's not good. The mansion stood since the 1620s. A witness to a very long... A witness to a very long history of joy and pain. Okay. After the mysterious disappearance of Lady Charlotte, the great house was left abandoned. And it's such a pretty house. Too many windows for my taste. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things. Cries and howls filled the nights. And hearsay a mysterious woman that roamed aimlessly. People who dared enter its halls were simply never heard from again. Then why am I going in this house? Even after 400 years, these stories remain. Much like the house itself whispers about the once great house, its legend, and its curse. Still fall upon the villagers' ears. The villagers' ears. However, Briar Reality Corporation is convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. You are all going to die. With little regard for the truth, the corporation decided to place the property on sale. Sold to the person who can patch up all those windows. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside wait to be discovered by brave souls like me. I'm brave. I can deal with any kind of spookalooks that you can throw towards me. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. No curse get me. Oh, oh, oh. Lady? I, I... Good luck. Thank you. I might need it. Isabella. Ooh. Oh. 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 Uh, that was my phone. Hello. Isabella. Are you there? Where are you? 
raise my chair. There. Much better. Where are you, Elizabeth? Immediately, I recognize the anxious, jittery voice coming for the other end. Oh, hey, Wells. I'm at St. Jorady High. What's the matter? Did you have to say the whole school's name? What do you mean? What's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here, and you're late. Jeez. We're on a ship together, you promised. Oh my god, don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out! Calm down! You know I take my promises seriously. Why do they both sound the same? I'd like to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to go higher, but then I realized I have testicles. I... <coughs> I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. Ah, I like that. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since nobody lived here since, like, forever. But beautiful nonetheless. Still too many windows. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Probably will. Yeah, well... I wouldn't be so sure that... about that. Not after the rumors they say that's, that it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real, after all. And even if they are, which they're not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be listening right now, and they might not be happy with you. Enough of our... Enough to use their supernatural ghost powers to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. Anyway. Anyway, get there ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being on my own. Fine. Fine. Let me finish up here. I'll be there soon. <laughs> Okay. See you. Bye. Bye! Rose, still charming as ever. Who is that? I use the deep voice because we don't know which gender they are. And I assume deep is a neutral gender. I look up from my phone to see Becca. Oh! Oh, everything looks cool. Man, that is really good. Whoever did this, props for you. Good job. This is awesome. This looks great. She gives me a questioning look. Yeah, she looks pretty questionable. Oh, that? That was Rose. She's an agent, like me. We're scoping out that big mansion down on Aslan Village. Today's sort of its grand opening to Republic to the public. The corporation wants us to check it out one last time before we let potential buyers tour later. This afternoon. I sound like I stutter, but in a very very uh what's it called? A very uh elegant way. Hi, 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 hi. A mansion? You did it! <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna give her an annoying voice. She looks really cute, but I'm gonna give her like a terrible voice. Imagine! You mean that big spooky mansion you're telling everyone about? 
Didn't you keep telling us how he just gave you the creeps? And you had to go there? Mm. Not a woman you want to bring home to mama. Well, I did promise Rose. I won't get you. And besides, a job is a job. <laughs> gotta do what I gotta do to make a living. You look very apathetic about it. <laughs> oh. Gee, Snickers. What's so funny? Oh. Oh, that, that was not... Oh, that was, that was an erotic man. <sighs> Nothing. Nothing. I just didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I'm gonna make her sound like Kermit the Frog. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. <laughs> I mean, no offense, but I thought you'd back out. We've been freaking out about the place being cursed and all. It isn't your mantra. Morality and personal benefits over money? Isabella, you're gonna be Cleveland Brown. You're gonna be Cleveland. It's not the time. It's not all the time, but of the rumors, Briar Reality is desperate to sell the. L <sighs> I'm not gonna do that. I like her voice, the voice I ever did again. <laughs> Not all the time. Because of the rumors. Bad reality is desperate to sell the lot. And the agent who runs the deal is going to, to get a big bonus. I could really use the extra moolah. Get us that money. Mama called last night. Papa isn't getting any better. And they're asking for more money to help with the... bloating hospital bills. Sympathetic look crosses Becca's pale face. Oh, I feel very Life back home. Life back home is tough, huh? A little bit, yeah. It would help if it wasn't if I wasn't the only one in the family who has a job. <laughs> tough was an understatement. The burden of feeding eight mouths and settling Papa's bills rested on my shoulders. I barely have any money left for myself. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. Oh. The struggle. Ever since he was diagnosed with cancer, he had no choice but to leave his job. I just wish my drunkard older brother would lend a hand. But Lord knows if that'll ever happen. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. What's wrong with instant noodles? She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You don't want to end up in the hospital like your father, do you? Hey, hey, instant noodles are good. Her voice raises as if she scolds me. It's clear that it's a command and not a request. I'm not entirely sure if I should be happy or annoyed. That's how a normal person yawns. I'm glad someone looking out. I'm glad someone's looking out for me. But Rebecca's demeaning attitude can be such a pain at times. She's more controlling than Mama, and that says a lot. Man, this game's so vivid. Isabella. Oh, why did I read her name? Yeah, I'll stop. Shimona. <laughs> That's the voice I was making. I'm thinking of fucking Michael Jackson voice. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I grumbled, but she didn't seem to care much. She gives me a warm smile. <laughs> Such a pretty face that she smiles and just goes, Good. Look, if you need anything, tell me and I'll help you in any way I can. You don't have to do this alone. Maybe I can lend you money and you can pay me back or whenever. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it. But you know, I'm not a fan of borrowing money. Oh! The way you make me feel, Becca. You really turn to me. Yeah. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response. She takes a quick glance at the wall clock above the chalkboard. Oops, stupid mic. Well, that's enough chit chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. I will. Thank you, Rebecca. She turns to her de- uh, She turns to her desk, sloppily turning the pages of a rather thick textbook about mesophilia. I reckon she's trying to work out her lesson plan for next week, but her eyes are distant and she doesn't seem too attentive on whatever is at the book. It is obvious something else occupies her thoughts. You sure you can manage on your own though? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. You shouldn't even be working right now. Oh hush, dear. You don't worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be as right as rain. She turned into a southern gal out of nowhere. I hesitate for a moment. Becca and I are neighbors. There goes my sandal. She was the first to welcome me when I moved here to England a couple of days, a couple of years ago. England! England! She's brazen, lightly. Huh, I had many stories to tell about her students. Okay, so she's a teacher. Well, quickly became friends. We quickly became friends. And with my family staying in the Philippines, she filled the void and became a sort of sister to me. That's good. Becca had a cold for a couple of days now. Despite my advice to take the week off and rest, she went uh, ahead to work anyway. I caught her trying to sneak out this morning. Since there's no stopping her, I volunteered to drive her. See? Ah! I heard a St. Georgetti High School, where she teaches history to rowdy teenagers. Hey, you got a wise guy here. Hey, George, this is a wise guy. She's trying to teach me history. Not exactly the easiest job in the world, but I guess perfect for her. Phosphorus. And somewhat bossy persona. Oh, Belle. Becca clicks her. Becca clicks her fingers, snapping out of my thoughts. Oh, I thought she like sassed her like, girl! Seriously, lady, I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel any, uh, if I still feel bad and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. Capiche? Uh, capiche? 
Revolution. Review complete. Eh? 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 You complete? I go and I take the screwdriver. Shove it in your pee hole. See how you feel now, huh? She gives me a reassuring smile. I sigh defeated. Alright. I'll see you later, okay? Uh. Uh. She nods. Of course. With a wave goodbye, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. That was nice. Now let's get to some spooks. My car is parked down the street. Just outside, just outside the campus grounds. The mansion is somewhere. Blah, blah, blah. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside. As I pass by a couple of buildings, I'm about to turn on the radio when my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking. Oh, that vibration! Oh, oh God, my phone went off. Sorry, I've been looking at my phone. I, ne I neatly tucked between my ear and shoulder. Oh, okay. Rose? This again. That voice. Ash? Bingo, sweetie! Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still later this evening you mean that thing with that it? yeah it's the premiere of the indie movie he's been working out for ages he's really excited to watch it with his friends and by friends he means us apparently because everyone knows filmmakers don't have too many friends prime example yeah, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool, I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Ha! I'm this dick! Sorry, that wasn't professional. Around 4... 6 p.m. I don't know. I don't keep track of my schedule. <laughs> it's the first day of the open house at Armageddon Mansion. And we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. I'm a girl mansion. You know, the big Jacobean mansion in Oslo Village. I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the s scaredy cat finally toughened up why did I slowly start turning Australian shut up I can hear Ash chuckle from the other end I'll see you later drop me a call when you're done alright sweet cheeks whatever bye bye teasing me whenever he's he sees a chance I'll show him who's tough it takes a few more minutes before I finally reach the infamous mansion a little how am I yawning so much oh it looks beautiful and let's get right to the show I have to admit it does look wonderful from the outside yet that does nothing to hide that something is just Wrong. The neighborhood nearby is desolate. Everyone keeps their distance out of fear, horrified at the thought of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. 
The lack of human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it had or that it had any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how the place is going to be at night. Parking my car along the vast green fields, I make my approach. I rummage through the bags for the key when I notice that the door is slightly ajar. No, the door is slightly, if not completely, made of wood. It is not slightly ajar or any cylindrical object to hold pickles. Rose must have left it open. Oh, I don't like it. Entering, I just find myself completely aware of my surroundings. Okay, okay, okay. They've cleared every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook and cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span, all for the sake of making the mansion more exciting for potential buyers. Oh, ba -ba. Mm. Why do I feel like that um, mos that mosaic mosaic thingy in the back is going to come into play at some point? But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it was going to eat you alive, probably. If you ask me, they should just leave this place alone. Something in this world, some things in this world are better left in peace. Never be disturbed ever again. Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here. Where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'd hear me despite the threatening silence. She could be all the way on the other side of the mansion for all I knew. I reach for my phone and dial her number, but... The number you have reached is not in service. Oh. Not in service. What do you mean, not in service? We were talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Right? Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away. Right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably wandered off deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her phone again, hoping to connect this time. The number you have reached is not in service. It's unsettling, but to no avail. Oh boy, I have a very bad feeling about this. So do I. Rose, if you can hear me. Please come out. Come on, Rose. This isn't funny. You know, this place gives me the creeps. Oh. Oh. The heck was that? This isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before... Venturing on Ugh. deeper into the mountains. Why do I yawn? <coughs> Taking a couple steps forward, I notice something move by the hallway above the grand staircase. Dot, dot, dot. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny, I'm leaving you. you. If you don't come out. Silence. Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going. Okay, that was a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. I dial her number again, hoping she'd pick up this time. Come on, please, give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally. It came through. Ha. Ha ha
Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She didn't respond. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, I don't like Alberta the <laughs> Ask again as the static starts to settle. Attic. What? Why the attic? <coughs> Looks like we're not going to the attic, guys. Oh, I got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is. There's barely any signal there. But why was she there? Out of all the places she could be, she just had to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room in the place. Is she going to get back at me for being late? Whatever. I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better. <sighs> about being in this place? God. I make my way carefully up the stairs. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I chose real estate when I could have picked up a career that didn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greeted me. The hallway had two wings, the east and the west wing. The two master bedrooms and the library were situated in the east wing. Meanwhile, I faced the west wing, which held the conference room, the theater room, and the end of the hall, a simple wooden door leading upstairs to the attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs that led to the attic are deep, steep, and were made of rocks. Oh, yeah. If I'm not too careful, I could easily stumble and fall. Thank God it's still daytime. With how old this place is, this place was, there was no light fixtures, and I need to need a candle or a flashlight to make my way around. Reaching the top, the door opened to the maids' quarters. Hello. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh. Set the door open. That's depressing. Looks exactly as it had been since the first time I, I was here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. That's depressing. That's where they live. Did the cleaning crew miss this room? my concern here now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Bloody hell! Bloody hell! Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no. I couldn't have been a dream. And I'm sure she said she was here in the attic. After all, the community ambiance of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. Maybe this is just a prank. Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got her. Uh, shut up, brain. You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing the mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlash, outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be more, to be a model employee, 
but not this time. No, I'm turning back for the sake of my family. Sanity. By our reality can find another agent who is more fucking realistic than me to tour people around at this haunted house. Before turning back, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Huh, what's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter. It's a letter. Laying, laying on the ground, just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this letter the last time I was here. A few days back, a few other agents. And I were exploring the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last to, uh, to look inside the attic and leave. And this certainly wasn't, hasn't been here before, okay. Someone must have been in this room since then. Did Rosa leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs to and from the attic. Only one way to find out. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough. I'm worried it will fall apart if I so much as touch it. You already did. I need to be careful. I open it and what I read sh shocked me to my core. Shocked me to my core. <coughs> oh, that actually sent like a chill up my spine. Like the mu the little, the little um, sound bite. It, it, uh, it sent a little chill up my spine. What? What? Oh my god. It, the letter is filled with nothing but word but the words help me written in a crimson s shaded pen. Or blood. Probably blood. I gulp. The same phrase just keeps going on and on until Send this to five people or else. No! Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper. I peek into the envelope to make sure it's not. M I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No! Please, no! My hands are trembling. As dread creeps over me, I start to realize that the room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. Oh God! I don't want to click. A bare a pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping wounds, and with skin eaten away to reveal f flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. Uh, nerves and veins are exposed in a grotesque display, a foot rested in a painfully odd angle, and all the toes seem to have fallen off, leaving only the decayed remains of infected nail, but... Uh, I can feel bile rising to in my throat at the gory sight. It's too much. All of this is too much. I want to make a break for the door. Run, scream, throw up, anything. But my feet won't budge. I feel trapped in my own body, glued to the floor out of terror. The only sigh that I'm still alive is the loud beating of my heart as it echoes in my ears. And the tremor of continuously running. Da -da 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 -da. I'm definitely not breathing, or maybe I am, but Lord knows it certainly doesn't feel like it. I put my mouth to say something, but the words 
catch in my throat. I'm completely paralyzed and frozen on the spot. I want to cry. I don't know what I should do. Lord, please help me. Oh, no, don't give me an option. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. No, 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 no. Close my eyes and pray. I shut my eyes tight, muttering uh, fervent prayers under my breath. Oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayers <laughs> taught to me by a child by mama and papa slipped out endlessly through my teeth. Because God, oh God, if you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one. And if God didn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. A cold comfort. Uh, I don't like it. I wait. I don't want it. And I wait some more. Huh? 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 It's gone? Relief watches me over as I shakily got up from, from my feet. Oh! <laughs> Giving the door open, I slip out without a second thought and make it run, f run for it down the, the stone steps and on out to onto the ha hallway. I take a look back and make sure it wasn't behind me. Any other person might have stopped, dismissed it as a trick of the light of an overreactive imagination, but I wasn't taking any chance. I wasn't taking my chances. I knew what I saw in there, and I wasn't giving that thing the chance to catch me off guard. I wasn't safe until I got out of here. It was going to jump out at any moment and give me get me while I was still here. I told them. I fucking told them. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Racing down the stairs, a breathy, a breathy laugh escapes me, and my shoe slips. And I find myself falling. Ah! Ah! She fell down the stairs? Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. Oh! Not you! Go away! Go away, bad lady! I feel my head grow fuzzy and my vision aims, dims, even as I fight to stay awake. Uh, okay. <laughs> the last thing I see are those feet before all that I know is darkness. Huh? Oh! So good! So good! I believe in you. This was this shit. I have a headache. <laughs> I didn't like that. That was a really, really creepy. I didn't want to see that face. But I, that game was so good. I am going to be looking out for you. Sadly, our demo ends right here. If you liked it, please support the Letters Kickstarter. Thank you so much. We hope to talk to you soon. I hope to see the rest of this game. Dang! I will probably make another video where I take the other route where I actually brave it and look up. Wait, can I load game? Ah, oh, no, I can't. I'll probably do that in the next video. I'll, I will, I will... I will freaking buckle down, clench my butt cheeks, and look up and hopefully see a terrifying face that will scar me and make me shit myself. But thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next segment. Thank you. Uh, bye bye.